I don't know about you, but I like my Jason Voorhees like I like my Phil Collins. No jacket required. In honor of Friday the 13th, 2023 landing smack dab in the middle of 5 P.O.A. Ween, today we're going to spotlight one of cinema's greatest slashers, Jason Voorhees. For the purpose of this video, we're focusing specifically on the Ultimates collection by NECA. Seeing as how his mother was the killer in the first movie and we don't have an ultimate of her, Jason's ultimate journey begins with Friday the 13th Part 2. I really did enjoy this whole picture in a silhouette design for the first couple of films, but not half as much as I like everything that comes in this box. Really cool figure photography of Jason on the inside flap. I've said it before and I'll say it again probably in this video, but NECA has the best boxes in the biz. 28 bucks, huh? Boy do I miss those days. From the outset it's very clear that there was no real vision for Jason at this point, this is about as bland and generic a design as you can get. Even so, NECA did a phenomenal job of capturing it in plastic. It's unfortunately very difficult to get him to stand straight, but what he lacks in posture he more than makes up for with some incredibly well-painted plaid. The torso and overalls are actually two separate pieces that move independently of each other, with the overalls being a softer rubber piece. Traveling down, there's some wonderfully filthy paint detail throughout, giving Jason that creepy hermit-in-the-woods feel. I'm particularly impressed with all the stains and splotches on the sack, and how nicely painted the eye underneath is. Of all the things that changed, one thing from the very beginning that stayed the same was Jason's weapon of choice. This more hook machete is wonderfully bloody and dinged and detailed, and the handle is very lifelike. True to the film, he also comes with a pickaxe. Careful Jason, the miner from My Bloody Valentine might not appreciate that. He's also got a pretty sweet pitchfork. Between that, the costume, and the sack, this version of Jason kind of feels like an evil scarecrow. If that wasn't enough, he also includes a spear, it measures a very impressive seven and three quarters inches, and then lastly in the weapons department is this kitchen knife. Once again, very lifelike detail. Possibly the coolest accessory is the desiccated head of his mother. No likeness rights to worry about here. Bringing that box back out, you can see what a great job they did. Speaking of heads, Jason has a separate unmasked version of his very own. Jason is still a living person at this point in the series, but definitely a very mutated one. They also decided to make him a redhead, and if all that wasn't enough, this Jason also comes with a really cool campfire. Well, as cool as a campfire can be. Between the wood and the rocks, it's just so incredibly lifelike. They later reused this for the Spirit of Splinter scene in the Ninja Turtles movie. To celebrate the 3D gimmick of Friday the 13th Part 3, NECA gave their box a lenticular cover. Definitely one of the cooler packages in the line, but again, all the packages are pretty cool. Peeking inside, we can see a Jason who's a bit more familiar. After stumbling out of the gate with Part 2, the filmmakers finally made the most important change to Jason's design, getting rid of that ginger hair. No, no, nothing but love for gingers around here. I'm, of course, talking about the hockey mask. This simple blank expression became synonymous with Jason moving forward, and this basic costume design became one of his most iconic looks. Albeit, he is a bit bloody this time around. Still lots of incredible paint detail, though, to show how dirty and grimy he is, and still pretty monstrous under the mask. In fact, this Jason comes with two hockey masks. This one, has a bloody chunk hacked out of it from the end of the movie, and peeking underneath we can see it's actually part of an entirely separate gashed up head. As before, this Jason comes with a small arsenal. This of course includes a machete, a bloody axe, though not quite as menacing looking as the last one, we've got another knife. One of my favorite accessories in this set, this old rusty wrench. This isn't a weapon you see a lot, so having one shrunk down to action figure scale is really great for figure photography. Same thing with this fireplace poker. Though, to be fair, to 2018 Michael Myers has one too. Here we see a rare glimpse of movie monsters playing poker. Struggling to shed that scarecrow persona from the second film, Jason once again comes with a pitchfork. But for the coolest and arguably the most iconic weapon from the film, he also has this harpoon gun. Just look at how lifelike the bands are up top. As much as I enjoy Friday the 13th 3D, I've always had a very special fondness for the final chapter. The first of two times the series would lie to us about being the final installment. Jason's design is basically the same as last time, except that now he has khakis to go with his green dicky shirt. Clearly this is to make him look more like the Wolfman. And while parts 3 and 4 do share the same lower half, the hands, head, and torso are new. After all, Richard Brooker played Jason in Friday the 13th Part 3, whereas Ted White played him in Part 
IV, and they were very differently built men. One thing that was not differently built, however, is his mask. It's the same old used for the gash head from Part 3, though the head underneath is definitely a lot worse for wear than the last time we saw him. If you didn't know, his machete fits there after young Corey Feldman as Tommy Jarvis lodged it into a skull, but if that's too gruesome, he also comes with this option. This is less gruesome, right? As we've already seen, Jason once again comes with his machete. By the way, from one Jason to another, you really need to do something about your nails, bro. This time we have another axe for the collection, yet another kitchen knife, but this one's bloody. And hey, what cutlery set is complete without a meat cleaver? This time around, NECA gave Jason an alternate accessory holding hand with a wider grip. This is to accommodate one of my favorite new additions, the bloody hacksaw, but the funnest accessory has got to be the bloody corkscrew. All this plus the headstone of Jason's mom, Pamela Voorhees. Is she though? With Jason dead, Paramount wanted to take the franchise in a new direction. A new beginning, if you will. At the time of its release, this figure was actually a bit controversial amongst collectors. Instead of the main antagonist of the film, which we'll be getting to in a few minutes, this figure was based on dream sequences that a now adult Tommy Jarvis was having about his last encounter with Jason. Another thing that rubbed collectors wrong was that this figure was a near complete reuse of the previous one. Granted, he's a lot wetter looking this time, and also a lot wormier. That reuse afforded us three interchangeable heads. First we have the worms, and then we have worms free. One thing that's unique to this Jason is that none of the masks are removable, so the eyes are just darkened holes. Since we never saw underneath Nightmare Jason's mask, the fact that it's not removable does make sense. But whatever's going on under there, he still has his scars from the previous film. One thing that was a stroke of genius is that NECA also included this look. Jason never sported this hockey mask in the film, but it was the picture on the movie poster. Dream Jason also has a bloody axe. To NECA's credit, it's an original sculpt and not reuse. Gotta have that machete, of course. Not to mention this cool ice pick, as well as a totally uncool mask angled left hand, and not to be outdone by his mother, a tombstone of his very own. Granted, the tombstone is really just a couple of shaved down fence posts shoved in some dirt, but NECA did a great job of bringing it to life, even going the extra mile to detail the back. On the subject of the tombstone, one of my favorite features about this figure is the insert card. It actually recreates the inside of his grave, complete with a bird's eye view of the rain coming down. Really offers some fun figure photography opportunities. So then, why were fans so polarized on this entry. Well, for one thing, the movie was a bit more comical and trashy than other entries in the series. Most importantly, this isn't Jason. Oh, he might look like Jason, but underneath the hockey mask is another mask. And under that mask is a man named Roy. Roy capitalized on the Jason legend to avenge the murder of his son. And visually, there are some clues that this isn't our normal Jason. For one thing, he's wearing a completely different hockey mask. Props to NECA, by the way, for painting all those silver details on the straps. And instead of wearing Jason's dicky and khaki combo, he's now wearing a jumpsuit. Who does this guy think he is? Michael Myers? Well, in fact, yes, he is. Looking at them side by side, Necker reused Halloween 2018 to make the Roy figure. This includes the arms and legs. Even the hands are the same. In Necker's defense, they did give him different shoes. They also retooled the torsos a bit. It does actually create one minor issue for this figure, the neck. Roy's wearing a big bulky over the head mask, but he has the same neck as Michael Myers, so it kind of looks scrawny. Fun fact, the actors who play Jason wear an open face mask like this underneath the hockey mask with the full monster makeup only being applied on days where it's seen on camera. Though, how would Roy have known about Jason's head gash? The important thing is that Roy knows how to kill people, and he's got the machete to prove it. He's also been given a meat cleaver of his very own, a knife that looks a lot like the one Ghostface uses. He also comes with a spike that I figure I should probably show this way, because otherwise you're not going to be able to see it, and road flare for luring the T-Rex away from Lex and Tim. No, no, the road flare is for killing. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. One thing that'll come in handy during those Crystal Lake Olympic Games is a six inch long spear. To hold his last two weapons, we need to swap out Roy's alternate accessory holding left hand. This includes an actual working pair of hedge clippers and something I highly doubt will ever be made by any other action figure company, 
a garrote. The strap is a soft plastic, but it has real metal rings on the ends. Although Roy's gained a bit of a cult following, this Scooby-Doo approach to Friday the 13th didn't really sit well with fans, so in Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason came back. Not just back to the franchise, literally back from the dead. From this point forward, Jason was an undead creature who kept coming back no matter what, but just because he's a corpse doesn't mean he doesn't know how to accessorize. Luckily, he also has his mask, and in one of the oddly best bits of continuity from film to film, the gash in his head. Notice he's also back in the green shirt and the khakis. It really does feel like a natural evolution. Admittedly, this Jason's packed a bit lighter than usual, but he does come with this shockingly good fence post. It comes in two pieces, and Jason's supposed to be able to hold it, but they're difficult to slide into the hands, and I didn't want to press my luck. In addition to that snug fence holding hand, he does have this machete holding one. Jason also has a hunting knife, and the cool part is you can store both these weapons in his belt. Similar to Dream Jason, and this one comes with a tombstone. Also similar to Dream Jason, and once again, the insert tray is his grave. Oddly enough, the coolest feature of this Jason doesn't even come with the figure. Instead, it's this display base that came with the Friday the 13th accessory set. The base itself is the Camp Crystal Lake, or I mean Camp Blood sign, a big old heavy rock, some chains, and this acrylic stick. Put it all together and you can reenact the end of the film where Jason is chained to the rock and then cast into the lake where he belongs. He obviously wouldn't stay down there for long though, bringing us to Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. Originally conceived as Jason vs. Carrie, the film ended up being Jason vs. Generic Girl with telekinetic powers. New Blood was also fan favorite Kane Hodder's first time in the role, and was the most lavish Jason costume before or since. NECA really went all out in bringing this to life, and if you want to see it deep dive on this figure, I did a whole review dedicated to it. As we can see, Jason has deteriorated even further. He's also better packed with accessories than ever before. This includes an alternate screaming head. Note the attention to detail, by the way, with the two head scars. The screaming head is for the psychically shattered version of the mask. In addition to the open hands he comes preloaded with, Jason also has accessory holding hands. In terms of weapons, we've got our tried and true machete. Harkening back to his scarecrow days from part two, he also gets this pretty sick looking sickle. The ever popular axe, a large menacing kitchen knife, an efficient for killing tent steak, a very handy brush cutter, but most importantly, this buzzsaw weed whacker thing with an actual spinning blade. Also, I know I gushed about it in my full review, but really, just look at all the detail in this. Frankly, Jason was never this awesome looking on screen ever again. Paramount only produced one more Friday the 13th film, Jason Takes Manhattan. Sadly, it's one figure that NECA was not able to produce before the line had to go into hiatus due to legal battles. In fact, NECA would not be able to add the next three Jason movies to their ultimate line. Though a couple of Jason Goes to Hell figures do exist, courtesy of McFarlane and Mezco, as well as a Jason X figure, courtesy of Movie Maniacs. Fortunately, there was one other Friday the 13th property from this period period that NECA was able to make a figure off of, the Nintendo video game. The figure emulates his simple monochromatic color scheme from the game, and is a redeco of part three. They did zhuzh this Jason up a bit though by adding some shading, and to be honest, the face looks even creepier with this color scheme. Now I'm not saying that NECA has a bias towards Jason over Freddy, but video game Jason has a machete, an axe, his mother's severed head flying around like Tinkerbell, and the box plays his music. Video game Freddy, by contrast, has a hat. I should probably point out that there were multiple releases of this figure and that those features trickled out over time, but come on, man. This video game battle between Freddy and Jason brings us to Freddy vs. Jason. Ultimate FVJ Jason is a retooled and rescaled version of the deluxe box set version from many years prior. In addition to updated articulation in the arms, he now has articulated legs as well. This interpretation of Jason is very different from what we saw in the Paramount films. The face is long Longer. He's now sporting a jacket and also some platform shoes. Personally, I think all of this is in an effort to draw comparisons to the Frankenstein monster. In fact, director Ronnie Yu said one of the reasons why he cast Ken Kersinger instead of fan favorite Kane Hodder was because of Ken's more sympathetic eyes. Shame he wasn't also casting an eye to continuity issues like the hatchet mark in the head. Although this is one of my least favorite looks for Jason, Nick has done a wonderful job of bringing it to life, giving us Jason's full face underneath. To 
despite the fact that we never got a good look at it in the film. In terms of accessories, NECA also included this version of the mask gashed up by Freddy's claws, as well as this one soaked in blood. In addition of giving him two copies of the same mask with different paint jobs, they gave him two different versions of the same machete, but one of them has this very cool clip on fire effect. Lastly, Jason comes with his teddy bear. It was only visible, I think, in one scene, and again, all in service of making Jason more sympathetic than he actually is, but I gotta say it is pretty cute. As much as I genuinely appreciate what comes in the box, the accessory I wanted the most was an updated version of Jason carrying Freddy's severed head. With Freddy's copyright and the same kind of legal battle as Jason, it remains to be seen if we'll ever get a screen-accurate Freddy vs. Jason Ultimate. Had NECA included an Ultimate version of this accessory, it would have at least given us customizers something to work with. This brings us to the real Final Friday, as of this recording anyway, the Platinum Dunes remake. Similar to Freddy vs. Jason, this was a redo of a figure NECA had already made, but unlike Freddy vs. Jason, I only have this one. Jason's back in the jacket for a film that feels more like a Greatest Hits album than an original story. Once again, being portrayed as a living man, he's been given scraggly hair. Oh, Jason, honey, those hair plugs are not working for you. And if you don't stop picking, it'll never heal. Joking aside, NECA did a really good job capturing this face. And while it's no Part 6 style tool belt, he does have a little side satchel. The remake tried to explain things about Jason, such as why he's able to get around the camp so quickly. Turns out he has a bunch of underground tunnels like a gopher. Just like in Part 2, he also has a bag over his head. Once again, this is very lifelike with all the folds and wrinkles. Of course, one thing that needs no reimagining is Jason's use of a machete. This one's about the size of a broadsword. Of course, we all know how much Jason loves his axes. He has been given a couple of new weapons, though, including a screwdriver and an ice hammer. And hey, look who's got another fireplace poker. Ante up, boys. Between all the sculpted and painted details, as well as the accessories, this is one of the best lines that NECA ever produced. I truly hope that the legal disputes can be settled and that NECA can finish what they started, but no matter what happens, it can truly be said that Friday the 13th fans are some of the luckiest toy collectors ever. For more 5 POA Ween videos, check out one of these, and come back for more Halloween videos all month long. Thank you so much for watching, I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice, have fun, and stay spooky.